Hey everybody, Chris Bober here. I am an associate broker and leader of Team Bober Nebraska Realty. And today we're ch I'm checking in the day, the day before I get out of town and go deer hunting. But I wanted to give you an update on some things that are going on, not just in our industry, but it seems like in the world in general. So if you're anyone who has email or is on any kind of social media, you've probably seen all the online scams that are going on. And some of them are pretty ridiculous, but some of them got pretty creative and have stolen some people's money. So today I wanna to talk to you, show you a couple examples of what we've been going through when it comes to in online scamming, um, especially with a real estate transaction. As you can imagine, when you go and sell your house for sale, it goes into a public database. Everyone in the world sees it, which is the point of hiring a realtor, but the scammers also see it and they do anything they can to get into that transaction and maybe try to find a weakness in there. And they, they prey on the, the emotional emotional baggage that people have when they go through buying and selling and try to get them to make poor decisions. So I'll show you a couple different examples. I'm also gonna show you uh, a couple ways um, of how to prevent this. So um, again, this is just kind of funny here. This is, I get a couple of these a day and you guys might too get them from Nigerian princesses or whoever. This guy here says that I've helped him with a gold transactions and that he has a transaction of $250 million that I, he wants me to help him with. And he just dropped me a bunch of money in the mail and it's coming my way. So I have a cashier's check for $10,150,000 coming to me to, to do something apparently. So that, that's kind of funny. I get one of those quite um, maybe once a day. Um, this here, right here, to get more specific into um, the kind of scams that are coming out there, this one here is from a closing company in Grove City, Ohio. Now I'm licensed in Nebraska and Iowa. I've been licensed in Kansas and Missouri, but at no point did I ever do business in Grove City, Ohio. So someone from Gunther Law in Grove City, Ohio says that if I want to view my closing statement, I will have the, be able to give it to my client. Now what, what's behind this right here is some sort of malware or software that's going to go on your computer and steal your identity. So these are coming all the time. What you're going to see is these are coming to clients and customers too. So. Um, if you're within a transaction and you get one of these, do not click on any of the attachments in there. So there's another example right there. Um, another example I can show right here. This actually came from someone within our company. This Christina Perez does a tremendous job for the Castro Group and I've done deals with them. But they sent me a thing that there's online documents for me to review. Now they went ahead and copied, somehow got into their email and copied their stuff. They actually messed up the number up here. This um, 391 uh, 0091 is not correct. Also, if you look up here, Castro Realty Group 1 at NebraskaRealty.com. So they made the slightest change in an email, and if I would have been in the middle of a transaction, I might have clicked on this. I know customers might have clicked on this too. So there's another example of how they're getting creative. Um, this right here, we use Office 365 for our company email, and I get one of these maybe once a week that says our email's full. You know, I gotta click on it to free up some space, but if you look up here, the, it says NebraskaRealty.com where it's coming from, but it's Lee Hardigan at Icano.Asia. So, you know, when you go through these kind of things, make sure you know who it's coming from. And don't just go ahead and click manage quarantine email. There, apparently there's an important email in quarantine I need to get to, but if I want to click on that, obviously it's some sort of scam because Lee Hardigan from Asia is sending this to me. So that's one way to know whether or not it's a valid email is if you click on here and sometimes it'll be hidden you got to kind of click on and see who it's from but if it doesn't match up with what the, the, the bubble says then it's probably a scam so um, what we've done here in Nebraska Realty and a lot of people have done is we have a wire fraud notice addendum that we put with all of our contracts that just kind of outlines to be aware that an escrow company they're the ones that are under attack because they handle the closing and what's happening it is they're hacking their emails are cloning their emails and they're sending stuff out like it's coming from Exarb and Title, DRI, um, Platinum, whoever you use as a title company, they're, they're sending out mel um, fictitious documents, fictitious emails, and that's where they're going after, okay? So a lot of times within a real estate transaction, you have to transfer money in. Um, it comes in from the bank, it comes in from you, you want money transferred out. Whenever you go through that, you always need to make sure that you talk to someone about the, the wire transfer, okay? There's never a case where it's an inconvenience to talk to someone about wiring a big sum of money. So don't feel like you're inconvenienc inconveniencing your title company, your attorney, your realtor, your lender, whoever it is, 
call them and ask them about this wire transfer notice that came through. So don't ever just willy-nilly click on it and send, send, um, send it out. So today, real quick to finish up, uh, there's a couple different things that I, I think that are good practices to prevent online scams. And this doesn't have to necessarily be within a real estate transaction. It could be from your financial advisor, insurance a person. It could be from your kids. It could be from their school about stuff. So you gotta be really, really careful. Number one is do not open emails or attachments from people you do not know. Believe me, you're not gonna miss out on an opportunity from an email if you don't open it or don't click on some sort of link. And that's what they want you to do. They want you to click on it, and from that, it's gonna, it's gonna attach some sort of bad software or malware or whatever we wanna call it that's gonna end up hurting your computer or stealing your identity, right? Um, if you have any questions, call the sender to verify. Now, don't call from the number that's in the email. Call from the number that you have in your phone or that you can go look up, maybe on Google or in the Yellow Pages. Don't call the number that's on there because that's probably the bad guy, okay? Um, if you have a chance, if you can, use your company email. That way the company becomes liable for anything that happens. And if it's your personal email, I know that in, in the real estate industry, if you use your personal, in, personal email and it gets hacked, well, you're not covered. And the broker's not covered either. So if you're within a company and you're doing company work, use the company's email server because they're responsible for keeping it safe, okay? Um, only send and receive documents through a secured server, right? If you're sending something that could be um, taken and used to purchase something to steal your identity, don't just send it an email to whoever, okay? Take and encrypt it, take and um, put, it in, put it in a Dropbox or some sort of device that's gonna have to have them log in. You can even Word, Excel, some of those documents sometimes can allow you to put a password in there that you can call and say, the password is the last four of your social security number. The password is your business address, whatever it is. You can protect those better. And if at all possible, if you're doing any sort of transaction, deliver the money, the check, or important documents in person. Now, this is something we always try to do here at Team Bover. We want to get face-to-face -face with our clients. So if we get an offer, if we get some something that we need from them, we try our best to be there in person and or pick up the phone call to explain it to them. We just don't expect uh, a text message, a Facebook message, an email is sufficient to handle an important decision. So that's, what we, that's our policy. It doesn't always happen because sometimes people are distance. They're on vacation, their clients are somewhere else. We can't always do it, but when and all possible, Get the check in, in, in your hand rather than transfer today. Take the money, take the contract, take whatever you can, give it to someone in person. It's a much, much more secure thing. So I hope you learned a little bit today. Um, it's just amazing to me that there's that many bad people out there that are trying to steal identities, trying to steal money, but they are everywhere. And they have gotten very, very, very persistent in our industry. So especially if you're going through a transaction like a real estate transaction, you know, you wanna make sure you call your realtor, call the title company, call your lender, call your attorney. Don't just assume that by clicking a couple things, your problems are gonna be solved or they're gonna do whatever they say. Make that phone call, go see them in person, it's a lot better. So if you have any questions about um, online, you know, I'm not an expert at it, but I do do our best to try to protect our clients from those kind of things. You know, Be sure to hire a great realtor, someone like at uh, Team Bober. Uh, we'll tackle the real estate market for you and keep you as protected as possible. So thank you so much, have a great week, and we'll see you next time.